Good afternoon. Uh, this is Bob Brennan. It is October 25th, just a few days from Halloween. I hope you're enjoying the fall season. Uh, I wanted to record this video because there is something that those of you who've been following in the news uh, have probably heard about, which is the mortgage documentation crisis. Uh, essentially, what has happened is <clears throat> that the major banks and a lot of the Wall Street investors have been bundling up these mortgages and in the process of bundling up all these mortgages, uh, they have uh, basically, uh, shall we say, lost a lot of the paperwork uh, and they have not kept the originals and they have changed, uh, they've transferred and assigned the title on these properties like thousands of times, not thousands, but for any individual property, but many times. Um, and the net result is, is that now when it comes time to foreclose on these properties, they cannot create the correct documentation chain to show that the entity or the bank which is trying to foreclose on the property actually owns the property. And this is having uh, obviously two uh, very bad effects. One is in the news and one is not so much in the news. Uh, the, the part that is in the news is that many banks, including Bank of America, are, are or were until recently suspending all their foreclosure proceedings uh, to make sure that the documents get straightened out. That is the, uh, that's the part that's in the news. And the part that's not in the news is that all the investors, all the people that uh, put money into these funds to buy up these mortgage papers, it's called securitization, uh, so that they can get the stream of income from these uh, mortgages, from these bundles of mortgages. Uh, these investors are starting to get restless about whether or not the various trusts which hold these, uh, these mortgages uh, actually have the title to the mortgages that they're supposed to be holding. So the, the next wave of litigation that's likely to result from this whole mess, and it is a mess, uh, is the investors themselves, and, and we're not talking about uh, you know Joe and and, and Mary uh, down, you know uh, you know putting a few pennies aside as part of their sewing club. We're talking about major institutional investors. Uh, the next wave of litigation that's predicted is that the major institutional investors are going to be going uh, against the banks and these trusts, saying if you cannot prove uh, the documentation trail for the mortgages you're holding then you've got to give us our investment back. And obviously, for a lot of the banks at this particular point in time, having to give everyone their, their money back because they don't have the paper trail and the documents to show that they actually own the mortgages, that could hurt. Um, that is what is in the news right now, but there's a broader lesson which I want to discuss, and that is just what is driving this, this, this sea change in how documents and how debts are being handled by banks and major financial institutions. What we see here, and I don't think anyone disagrees, what we see here is that the paper trails on these mortgages are very scant and very sketchy and very insufficient uh, and certainly not legal in the eyes of an attorney or a judge uh, because the major banks and the major uh, Wall Street investors are just trying to cut corners and save every little penny they can everywhere they can so they want to automate everything. They want to, uh, you know, they want to make it all so that it's, you know, that it's one of these things that, um, you know, they can just push a button and the information is right there, and the world will agree with them because they've pushed a button. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Um, what this means to you as a consumer, uh, and we're seeing more and more of it, is that people are getting credit card statements. They are getting credit reports. They're getting all kinds of things from banks, major lenders, major institutions, which say they owe money that they don't owe, or which say they owe some, some amount of money, which is completely different than any amount that they believe that they do owe. Uh, and what, then when they go back and say, will you please show us the documentation showing that I owe this money, of course, they, they can't produce it because the banks and the major financial institutions have been so busy cutting corners for so long that it is, actually, it was, it is impossible for them. To, uh, to bring forth the document showing that the individual consumers <clears throat> owe these debts. So, if you're a consumer and you're being accused of owing money that you don't owe, and you're sure you don't owe it, uh, obviously create the paper trail. I, I tell all my clients that they have to create a good paper trail. Always be very professional in your letters and always send them certified so you can prove that the bank actually received the letters. But you want to create that paper trail showing that you asked for the original document showing that you owe the debt. And if they can't produce it, and they continue to hammer you for that debt, either through a debt collector or themselves through credit reporting, uh, as far as I'm concerned, you have a very, very legitimate challenge to that, um, you know, to that, to that claim or to that lawsuit. Uh, it's a false credit reporting if they cannot substantiate 
uh, that, that the credit reporting is based upon a debt that they can actually prove. If people are debt collecting on it and they can't actually prove that you owe the debt, then challenge it. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, this idea that we all have to go along with uh, the bank's uh, glorious desire to save money by basically throwing us under the bus, uh, I don't agree with this at all, and I hope you don't either. Anyway, that's my uh, little talk for this morning, or this afternoon, actually. I hope you have a great Halloween, and I hope I talk to you soon. Bye-bye.